Oh, I Welcome just gotta to, got to give it an intro. Welcome to the no. weekly sync for code review uh, work, uh, group. Not working group, that's another call. Hi, everybody. Uh, so let's go we straight into working. it. We, we are, are a working, working we are group. A group. <laughs> yeah. I, um, like, I like the task force. Like we're a force of tasks, like task force. I like that. Anyway, so status, I wanted to give a bit of an update because uh, uh, we try to clarify this work as we go. And there's a lot of uncertainty and some uh, questions that we're figuring out as we go. Um, so we've broken down the work. I'm going to try to type as I as I write, as, type as I speak. Um, so we have this epic where we've broken down the work into multiple steps. Um, some of the open issues might not result in a lot of work being done, especially the, the first two, but, uh, we wanted to stop and think whether we should update those two states because essentially the big bulk of this work can be summarized in right now, we display one thing that's wrong with the MR at a time. And when you solve that surprise, here's another thing that's not done yet. So we're going to be changing that to show all the reasons that are currently holding the MR from being merged, which is in the context of auto merge, makes everything clear for everybody. Yay, win. So to get there, we need to de to refactor a really clunky and very hard to maintain part of our code base, which is the merge widget on the merge request. Um, the merge widget on the MR widgets. Oh gosh, this is so complicated. The MR merge widget, yes. So um, we have, uh, we double checked with uh, with engineers and this seems to be like, make sense uh, together with the other work we have in flight to display the list of reasons that uh, the MR is not ready to be merged yet. That's uh, also related, um, but there's one particular, <laughs> sorry, my cough. There's one particular thing that's um, being uncovered that I think it's important for us to be aware. Um, what we consider to be merge checks are not necessarily checks that the backend does today. Um, namely, uh, Patrick uh, uncovered that there are some scenarios that are not covered by the merge request, mergeable, um, action, I guess. One of them is the Jira association missing and the SHA mismatch. And I'm guessing the merge request dependencies as well. I'm not sure. Um, so it just feels that we need to, so we're not going to be able to mer to deliver this all at once. Um, so we probably got to be um, having a follow-up issue for the backend to then move all the remaining checks into this mergeable main check, which is the objective everything uh, uh, in sync. So where does that leave us? Just probably be a bit slower to deliver the whole thing. Uh, instead of being able to deliver in 16.6, we might run over a little bit to 16.7. Um, but all in all, I just wanted to share that um, here. The, um, the other part is that the once we have the lists, uh, of reasons, there's some potential UX things we want to iterate later. Right now, we'll be displaying the merge text that failed, but should we have some way of showing the merge requests that were done? Like, I there's some diverging opinion there, uh, but the backend is being built agnostically, so it's it just gives the results of the checks, um, and then the front end will work with it uh, through GraphQL uh, queries. Um, yeah. What else did I want to do? I think that was it. Yeah. Uh, right. So that's kind of like where I, I'll just cut it off. Uh, Phil is looking into it. Uh, there are some issues that are with Thomas and Stanislav just to, you know, spread the knowledge there. But uh, the first part is the work that Patrick is doing to provide that information of the checks and then displaying it, with his, which is also with Phil. Yeah, correct. Are we okay with that? Any questions? Any thoughts? I think all that makes sense. I appreciate the status update on sort of progress and effort. It's definitely, I think, more work than we want it to be, but I think the end result is 
is a good step in the right direction for us. Um, I think my I've seen still some um some like UX concerns, and so I want to make sure. Do you have all of the UX support you need, or should we try and make sure we're plugging in someone more deliberately and like giving? No, I think. Point? I think Matthew has been giving us a lot of responses to what we need. Um, I think I got all the questions I had um, responded by him. And then we ended off to the engineer. Um, what we decided, what we were realizing when we were discussing this, me and Phil was, it seems like the kind of work that we're definitely going to be uncovering things that we didn't plan for. So we need to have him nearby, like on the, on call, kind of like when we need some UX guidance. But we all understand that, yeah, we could stop work, do planning for a milestone, track every rock, nothing in beneath, not you know, nothing underneath, but then we wouldn't be advancing. So we're okay and because we understand the context that this is done on with the auto merge work and everything. So uh, it's okay to go with with what we have at the moment and we'll we'll improvise as we go. But um yeah, I think we will definitely get into better shape than what we were before, both in the code base and the UI for the users. So I think it's good. Uh, it's a good step to uh, definitely. Okay, I'll keep nagging Matthew. Uh, that's the TLDR. I keep nagging him. Okay. Yeah, cool. I'm just. Thanks. I'll um, I'll make sure Matthew knows. Just given everything else, that's what I was trying to figure out. If if Matthew's the right person, which I think he is, because of the work on the other yeah. widget, I'll just make sure we're clear on that in terms of the other things he's got going on. All right, thanks. I appreciate it. I dropped him a note on Friday just to give him a heads okay. up of all the things he was getting. <laughs> yeah. So uh, yeah, he's been very helpful in that. Thanks. When you, um. Earlier, you mentioned 16.7, sort of like domestic, not holding you to it, target. Sure, 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 sure. It's just the, is that um, 16.7 gets us into like, well, let's just say it's 16.7. It, it, at the end of 16.7, the merge widget is simplified. Like we've done the simplifying work. We haven't done the work for auto ready merge to merge. Oh. like the ready to merge and the new design that shows all the checks in one place or is that part of what you're saying is in that work to 167 so the list of checks is the first thing we're going to do that's that's before all of this um it will be behind the feature flag anyway uh, because it won't be complete uh to begin with um but that one will definitely be part of it the outer merge tweaks do not necessarily have to be held up. So for example, Stanislav has an issue this milestone to add, um, to cover one of the situations, one of the scenarios. I don't have the details on the top of my mind, but I think Matthew was looking into it. Um, so, but that work is still ongoing. The reason for that is because the little section of um, the ready to merge which is where I think the auto merge will manifest itself is not being changed. That's being maintained as it is. We'll just port it to this new way of displaying things. And then eventually once this is in place, we can look into the ready to merge and simplify all the logic and all that stuff inside for the benefit of pipeline team, pipeline authoring, I can't remember. That's the other issue that's in the Epic, but we're not really focusing too much. We're still addressing the other part of the problem. Um, but the ready to merge where you manifest whether it's auto merge or not, I think we can work on that in parallel. They're not being, they're not gonna be affected. Um, you just have to know exactly what we need to tweak. Okay, so, so we're not saying like 16.7 for this and then two to three milestones of auto merge work to get done. We're probably like, Again, not only just if we're using 16.7 as a thing, it's like 16.7 is is like closer to everything. And then there's probably a milestone or two of like clean up to like get them together versus sequential work where we're like Correct. six months. Correct. Okay. 
I agree. Yeah, yeah I think that's that, that, that's how I am seeing as well from from this point of view at the moment in time. Uh, maybe in a couple of months when I'm watching this recording, I'm beating myself up. You, you never know. Uh, but yes, uh, there was another thing I wanted to tell you in that regard. This is yeah, the sixteen seven comment is because I'm already counting for a follow up issue for backend. Add some checks to that mergeable uh, check we do. Um, because I think that's how they're going to wire it in to the front end. Like the mergeable goes through the checks, gets the results, feeds that over to the front end. Uh, and if they're not there, including that merge mergeable thing, we won't have it as a list of results. That's how I'm seeing everything so far. Um, and it makes sense to move that at a certain point. Um, but I think at the end of this milestone, we'll be able to enable a feature flag and see the list of checks some list of checks that are being failed right away on the merge request merge widget. Um, but yeah, that's my hope. Our hope. Okay. And honestly, yeah. to me, there's a part of there's a part of like experimentation there because we're seeing right now so far the mockups in isolation. But for example, one of the mockups has a level three of approval rules information, but like the approvals section is really close by. Right, so it feels like we don't have to give all the information on that little summarized list because mm -hmm. then it'll be too much information. It becomes invisible anyway. So we want to keep it succinct, I guess. If anything, it links to the widget or something. So, yeah, we'll experiment and see it all in in context and see how it feels, and and then we'll we'll improvise a little bit on the way. We're we're accounting for that a little bit, but yeah, those timings seem fair. Okay. Yeah, I think just then keep me updated on it. I think um, sure. auto merge work is interested external or interested other groups. And so we just need to be able to communicate sort of where we're at. So, okay. Um, I'll keep you I don't know. If, like, yeah, like a. Yeah, if you want to use the epic and sort of like we did for extensions and just do like a here's where we're at and here's what's going versus like I don't have to chat about it every week, but like something like that. Sure. Yeah, we could do that. Yeah, that makes sense. I can, I can, I can take care of that, or ask yeah. Phil to do that. Sweet. Anything else? I'm trying to think on the assignments. I don't think there's anything else that we did. This is the only thing that was on my mind too. So. Okay. Um, uh, you already know that the change default target branch, it's getting close and the custom emoji is also getting close. So we should get ready for some release post. Are we, yeah. Are we expecting both of those in, in 16.5? Yeah. Are they the the work yet? is finalizing. No, they're finalizing the work like last couple of steps. And then we'll be enabling the feature flag, which we still have a whole bounce on ahead of us. It feels like we're already in the last steps. Uh, we have plenty of weeks to, uh, to, I mean, Phil is a bit sick, to, sick today, so hopefully it's nothing serious. Um, but yeah, we were, we're counting for that to be enabled in 16.5. Yeah. When, um... new question. This is, this is the normal milestone? This isn't like the last one on the 22nd, right? We have one more. Yeah, I think it's still one away. One away. It's October, November, if I remember correctly. Starting with 16.6. So 16.5 will end on normal time. So it'll end the 17th. And then 16.6 will start. And then that one will end early. Got yeah. it. Yeah. Okay. Oops. So, I'll keep you posted on that as well. I mean, uh, once we roll it out, Phil will announce it on Slack and stuff. Keep you all updated to give it a try. But yeah, excited for that. Uh, I don't know if you saw, but that request was rejected to keep it in the navigation. The Sorry, mm -hmm. the custom emoji. Um, and the way I see it, it is potentially relevant to Ben. The way I see it, they, they, they rejected it because... Um, there wasn't a, a, a um, sustained uh, validation uh, from the perspective of users and everything that that feature is worthy to have that that highlight on the navigation. 
and we know this we we accept this because this was a feature that we that Phil picked up from you know the dust I guess um so what what we accept is that right now that's how it is but over time is if, if it gets mature enough to uh to do some validation and get some user 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 feedback on it we might have some more arguments to go back and re-request to be added to the navigation because we feel like that's where it makes sense together with the labels if you're managing something at the group level labels are created and managed also at the group level so emojis make sense emoji makes sense to be there um but we're okay for now to just add it to the pop-up. So at the bottom of the pop-up, you have a little thing to manage the uh, custom emoji in that context. So yeah, it's clunky, but it will get us off the ground. Okay. I guess the question would be, do you, do you want me to start gathering evidence for that argument to be made? Because I, you know, we sure. have, like intentionally sort of go after it make our argument yeah. yeah so i want to be honest like this is not a direct code review feature it just happens that it's a code review engineer that's working on it right it is related to code review because we use it but it's definitely used in many other contexts uh i think i don't know kai i wouldn't want to distract ben from other priorities but it would be nice to have that looked at um over time what do you think you think looked at in the sense of like, should we validate and then have? No, in, in terms of like validation, validating the uh, feature acceptance from the perspective of users. I'll, I'll oh. link to the, here's what I'll do. I'll link to yeah. the um, Epic and I'll link to the request that was rejected. And then you can, you can get to see Kristen's response, which was exactly about solution validation that I'm probably not being good at representing um i had it anyway. we've, we've had discussions about um tightening up on what's allowed in the navigation basically and that makes sense yeah we don't want to litter that thing so we're very supportive of those restraints so that's good i don't know where it is but i'll find it Okay, I'll add it to the agenda and or Slack on Slack, you will both uh, on Slack so you can take a look at it once I find it. 